Imagine one gram of fuel has the same amount of power as 11 tons of coal. Nuclear fusion is a very efficient and environmentally safe way of producing energy. It's an energy source of the future, but not right now. Currently, it's in its experimental phase. And this isn't to say that nuclear fission reactors aren't as important. Right now, nuclear fission is the best chance we have at producing proven base load energy while producing zero greenhouse gas emissions at scale. In this video, I'll be focusing on a new nuclear fusion reactor design called the Tokamak. It's just one of many other fusion reactor designs, and it looks like a donut. I know you're anticipating a Homer Simpson joke, but I'll hold off on that maybe later in this video. But this design is at the forefront of a nearly $30 billion large scale international effort where countries across the world are pooling in resources to make nuclear fusion possible. So let me go into the history of the Tokamak and also an overview of this reactor. Now the Tokamak was founded in the year 1951 in Russia's leading scientific Kirchhoff Institute. This was founded by two researchers called Sarakov and Tam, and their design astonishingly proved that plasmas could be heated to over 100 million degrees with a confined confinement in a reactor. Now, what is a plasma? Plasma is a charged gas composed of ions and free electrons. They're created when these ions and free electrons are heated to hundreds of millions of degrees. They actually glow, which is an interesting uh, phenomena. I love I love the glow of the uh, of plasmas in fusion test reactors. It's such a cool sight to see. Uh, the original layout of the tokamak was based off of two other fusion reactor designs called the Z-Pinch and the Stellarator. And what makes it unique is instead of using twists and turns like other fusion reactors, the Tokamak uses a torus or basically a donut shaped structure which allows for both increased confinement time and high temperature plasma. So that's what really makes this reactor unique. It has those increased confinement times and allows plasmas to reach very high temperatures. The Russian acronym Tokamak stands for toroidal chamber magnetic coils. Let me give you an overview of the ITER project. ITER stands for in the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, or in Latin, it is the way. Now it's an engineering mega project that will be the world's largest magnetic confinement plasma physics environment, and also the largest experimental tokamak reactor ever built. Now, this is why I love engineering. It makes the impossible possible. It makes science fiction nonfiction. It allows humans from across the world, brilliant minds to come together and collaborate to take theoretical physics and on paper calculations and actually create something. It's astonishing to actually see this reactor being built. And overall, this is why I love engineering. Let me get back on topic and go a little bit deeper into ITER. How did ITER and all of this start off? Well, in 1985 at Geneva Superpower Summit, General Secretary Gorbachev of the former Soviet Union proposed a project to develop fusion energy for peaceful purposes to the United States President Ronald Reagan. A year later in 1986, the agreement was reached between members at the time, the European Union, Japan, the Soviet Union, the United States, these nations collaborated on the design of an international fusion facility, which they would call ITER. Now, membership since then has grown to include South Korea, China, India, Russia, and there's also cooperation agreements built with Canada, Australia, and Kazakhstan. ITER is known to be the most complicated engineering project known to human history. It's also one of the most ambitious human collaborations since the development of the International Space Station and also the Large Hadron Collider. ITER will be succeeded by the Eurofusion-led demo, which is anticipated to be the first operational nuclear fusion reactor facility to produce electricity. So there is a next step from ITER. There is a future after ITER. ITER is the experimental phase to show that ignition is possible. It's possible to have more output than input for a fusion reaction. The next step, demo, will show that we can use this reaction to produce electricity by boiling water, 
spinning turbines and producing that electricity. Let's talk about the fuel that is used by the tokamak. Like any other energy source, all of these energy sources require fuel and tokamak is no exception. You can't simply take air and produce electricity. At the moment, options are quite limited as the highest performance potential on earth comes from a mixture of deuterium and tritium ions. Deuterium and tritium are isotopes which can help produce this reaction. And they're both heavier forms of hydrogen. Deuterium is sourced from heavy water and is abundantly found throughout the world. It's not very rare. Whereas tritium is a very rare isotope that is extracted at the moment from modern day candle reactors. So the Canadian reactor design, which uses fission reactions to produce electricity, it also produces tritium, which is extracted and used as fuel by ITER. Now, tritium is also planned to be self-produced in fusion reactors in the future using lithium blankets, but that's an innovation that will come later on once the technology progresses a bit. Now, once deuterium and tritium are combined at very high temperatures and pressures, it produces a neutron and also a helium nucleus with lots of energy. The heat and neutrons are used to heat water, create steam, and ultimately drive turbines to create electricity. So it's very interesting how these reactions work. Let me explain a little bit more about the structure behind the token. Let's talk a little bit more about this reaction. Now under extreme temperatures, hundreds of millions of degrees, deuterium and tritium fuse to generate charged particles known as plasmas, especially alpha particles. Now this reaction really depends on these charged alpha particles to maintain this plasma at constant temperatures. This will eventually allow these reactions to become self-sustaining. Ignition. This is the ultimate goal of ITER. It's to develop reactions, it's to develop this reactor which can produce self-sustaining reactions. So there are other tokamaks in the world which have created plasmas and have reached very high temperatures, for example, in South Korea, but these reactors have never really reached that ignition point. These plasmas are held together by very strong magnets and the method is called magnetic confinement. Why are magnets used? The reason why magnets are used is since these plasmas are reaching hundreds of millions of degrees, what you wanna do is you wanna keep these plasmas away from the containment structures. There's no containment on planet Earth which can hold these plasmas as they are because it would melt through everything. So in order to make sure that the reactor is not being destroyed, these magnets are used to hold this plasma in place and keep it away from the outer walls. Also, what's interesting to know is that these reactors aren't running at full speed, 100% power all the time. They're running in short bursts known as pulses, okay? So right now the world record held by a South Korean tokamak is operational for 20 seconds, whereas ITER is expected to operate from around 400 to 600 seconds. In the year 1990, fusion reactors were able to produce 10% of their overall heat from these charged alpha particles, whereas ITER's aim is to produce around 66% of its total energy from charged alpha particles. This results in the production of 500 megawatts of fusion power for up to 500 seconds. Now the overall goal of tokamak is to produce 10 times as much energy output as input of energy. So that is basically the goal of, uh, of ITER. It's, it's overall to have that energy production difference. Once you have that difference, you have enough energy to take it further and get into electricity production and, and thus produce a demonstration reaction. It's basically a TRL ladder, a technology readiness ladder. Right now we're at the experimental phase, the very beginning. So it's right after everything works on paper. So we know on paper fusion reactions work, but we're progressing this technology next to the next step, which is producing something which we know takes place. Fusion reactors have successfully worked across the world. And now this is the third step, which is let's tweak this technology so that energy production is viable. Let's produce a machine which is producing electricity uh, for profit. Now, this is the goal that ITER has. It's to develop a technology which progresses this technology readiness ladder. And after that, 
after this is ready, the ITER is successful, we can move on to demonstration of this reactor. After demonstration of this reactor takes place, we'll produce large amounts of these reactors, which can, which can produce electricity across the world. Let's talk about the three conditions required for a successful fusion reaction to take place. Number one, very high temperatures, okay? We need high temperatures to instigate high energy collisions of two lighter atoms, tritium, deuterium, to come smash together and produce large amounts of energy. So you need very high temperatures for this soup to start brewing, okay? Number two, you need a large plasma particle density. This is a reason why the, the sun produces fusion reactions so easily, because of its massive size. A large plasma particle density, what it does is it increases chances of collisions to occur. And number three is sufficient confinement time. So this is to hold together these plasmas which want to expand. Naturally, these plasmas are looking to expand. What you want to do is increase confinement time. We're, we're dealing with components that are made on planet Earth. They're made out of materials which can melt. And you want materials to be able to handle large amounts of plasma reactions for long periods of time. There is a lot of innovation and collaboration going on to find a sweet spot for this reactor. Now, what is this sweet spot all about? Now, the plasmas in this reactor are quite sensitive to disruptions. So the experimental reactor is aimed at finding a sweet spot in operational conditions where this, this reactor would perform the best. So this perfect spot is is the optimal operating condition where maximum fusion power is achieved and also maximum plasma control. This allows for high performance without breaching any operational boundaries. Basically, you want crazy amount of power, but also you wanna control this power, this control this plasma without breaking down any boundaries, destroying any components in the process. Right now, modeling efforts are being used uh, AI Artificial intelligence is also being used to shed light on requirements for effective plasma control. There's also synergies between control physicists, modelers, scenario developers, data engineers to develop new solutions and also designs to avoid disruptive boundaries. So this is a collaborative effort where great minds are coming together uh, to, to get together technical expertise in data engineering, artificial intelligence, physics, and develop models and designs which can help this tokamak uh, run at optimal conditions. Let's talk about tokamaks across the world. There are more than 100 tokamaks located across the world. So you may be asking, what makes ITER different? Why are we building one more tokamak reactor and investing billions of dollars into the device? Well, the reason why is because the tokamak built by the ITER project will have 10 times the plasma volume of any other tokamak operating today. And an example of a very successful tokamak project was JET, also known as the Joint European Taurus. It's a successful example of collaboration between several countries in Europe. And although this reactor didn't achieve its break-even power goals, it set a world record of achieving 20% break-even, which is extraordinary. So as we can see, collaboration works. And in terms of international effort, there's higher chances of this happening. There's more resources to pull in, there's better technical expertise, and you're getting these great minds together to work on this mission. It's incredible. I, I really wish I get the chance to one day visit the site and see, see the action for itself. All right, so why international collaboration? What's the need for collaborating with countries from across the world? Why get together and, and share this technical expertise? Well, the reason why is because ITER, when it has these collaborators internationally, has a stable financial and technical resources from some of the strongest nations in the world. Now, these nations aren't going anywhere anytime soon. And we know that ITER project can stay afloat for years to come. Also, this project has various design complexities. It's not as easy as just building this reactor. This reactor is made up of more than 1 million parts where maintenance and repair on the machine is also a very difficult challenge as it is. So right now, what is ITER's status as of right now? As of 2018, 95.8% of the design work is completed by ITER and 67.2% of the manufacturing process 
is completed. There's quite a bit of progress that has been made in the Eater project. So over the next four years, it's anticipating to finalize many of its components, which include central solenoid magnets, feeders, its uh, vacuum vessel sectors, also the thermal shield and the Cairo stack. Well, there you have it. There's an overview of Eater and the Tokamax. I uh, hope you enjoy this video. I look forward to maybe going through some of the other fusion reactor designs like the Z-Pinch or the Stellarator, uh, which are also other extraordinary designs. Uh, fusion technology is quite fascinating. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video um, and uh, hope you get the chance to check out some of my other videos. And till then, next time, take care. Bye.